Hello and welcome to the Bathroom Break Podcast. I'm Rab himself, and today my special guest is comedian Jeremiah Watkins. What's up, buddy? How's it going? What's up, man? <laughs> Good to be here with the, yeah. this nice cow pillow and everything. <laughs> this, is, uh, oh. this, uh, this definitely looks homemade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I stitched it up right before you got oh, here. Oh, yeah? This is, uh, this is a piece right here. I knew I was going to... Of gonna... art. A piece of art. Yes, Not just beautiful. A... <laughs> it's just beautiful. I knew I was going to hear it. Like as soon as, as soon as you guys came in, I was like, "Oh shit, I'm definitely married." <laughs> yeah. Did your wife make this? Um, no, I I don't know. I think somebody gave that to her and gave her this other one we have in the in the bedroom. And <laughs> it looks like something that somebody gave. Someone's like Nana stitched. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a white elephant gift. That yeah. somebody's like, "All right, you take you take this." <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, oh, cool. I'll just hand that right off. Yeah, to yeah. Like, I'm gonna trade. Anyone want to steal this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're good. No, no. I'm good with my <laughs> jar of peanuts over here. <laughs> yeah. I know. Fuck, man. White elephants. <laughs> that's always fun. I feel like that's hilarious when you when you sit down with with your family to have a nice little gift exchange, and then by the end of it, somebody's gonna like cut somebody's throat. Like, oh, I yeah. wanted that thing. Yeah, specific. that was the thing that I wanted, and then you did the <laughs> you stole it, and there's all these weird rules it's by region. Yeah, like if you like depending on what kind of party you go to, like some people are no, you know, there's two steals or one steal. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, you get two steals, but you can't steal at the beginning of the end. I'm like, it's are we little kids? Because you know, like when you're a yeah. little kid, you just start making the rules up as you oh, go. For sure. yeah. Like I watch my nephews do that all the time. They'll just be like, "Oh no, you can't step out of bounds." And then if you're out of bounds, then you're in bounds. And it was like, "What?" And when like the uh, like the amount is like only ten dollars, and then people are fighting over it, you're like, "We're all adults. We can just go buy our own ten dollar item if you really want that. Yeah. It's not that big yeah. of a deal." Yeah. It's the, I went to the, the the five below and got you your gift. I think you're good you can get it if you really want it there's a whole bunch of them that's hilarious um well man thanks for coming on i uh i I wanted to chat a bit about uh obviously uh reagan and watkins yeah (laughs) because that because that band is incredible and and cossack's over there behind the camera i know i love me some rick (laughs) cossack yeah (laughs) dude and he showed me you know the the, uh the project you're working on and and uh and that video is just so rad and hilarious and and just uh so much cool stuff i I get to see you on Kill Tony on Mondays, yeah. and uh, and and I've seen you perform, and and I mean, super talented dude, and like just musician wise, and just comedian, funny, and just I love how you just always just put yourself out there, fully, like fearless. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a take it or leave it mentality. <laughs> uh, some people leave it, uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, uh, I think people have a, a good time when I'm putting on a show because I really put my all into it. I really try to put on as much of a show. It's a, I feel like it's very much a trend in, in comedy right now for uh, a lot of people to kind of be either too cool for school or... Uh, worried about looking stupid or something and i grew up in that opposite era of comedy where it was big and uh you know i'm a fan of like you know jackass and cky and stuff like that so oh, it's yeah. like i i you know th- that kind of stuff like always has resonated with me like big physical comedy and stuff like that so yeah that's rad i mean and i do love it because i i think just personally as a fan of comedy you know i've never like i never embarked on that road i think it's incredibly difficult a super challenging kind of uh did you ever meeting. get like like uh like think about doing it on a dare or anything like that i i went up uh i went up twice and just told some stories and the first time like went well but i think i just went way too fast you know yeah that's a that's a a v- a huge uh, thing that happens when you're a beginner is just like you're just talking too fast and and you don't even realize that the audience can't even understand what you're saying because you're steamrolling <laughs> yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not even, hurry up, hurry up and get yeah. to the point. Yeah, you're just funny. trying to get off stage at that point. You're just like, ah. And you're not even giving the audience a chance to even consider laughing. Yeah, right. Because you're talking so fast. Right, there's no space to laugh. They're like, uh, 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 uh. all right, he's still, still going. <laughs> and just like anything else, like you kind of got to train an audience to know like this is when 
I'm intending you to laugh. Like this is right. the part that I oh, intend yeah, yeah, to be yeah. funny. So if you're rambling as a new comic or somebody who's going up for the first time, then the audience has no idea what to expect. And that's why you see so many beginner comics bombing is because they don't even, th that timing element, they just oh, don't have down at all. Perfect sense. Yeah. yeah th and that's definitely what, like I think I, I can understand it enough that I would be able to get it if I did it a lot. Yeah. But like in the beginning it was like just from naturally telling stories over the years and things like that like it worked out the first time I got a bunch of laughs and it and it worked and it was like intoxicating and I I could see why like you would then just drop everything and commit your whole life to it. Sure. Because it felt like that for me and I'm like, you know, I'm a camera dude doing my whole other life and I was like, huh. <laughs> like this is cool because because there's something about there's a rush that comes yeah, with it. Yeah. yeah. And then the second time I did it, um, I went down uh, with a fr uh, friend that was uh, a comedian buddy. He had a show, but it was like not in a venue that I, I did one at the dojo in Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first one. Over on that, Sycamore, the, the yeah. Sycamore Tavern. Yeah. yeah. That was the the first one I did. And that's like this little room where they're sitting there like looking at you pay, paying attention ready to laugh or or boo you or whatever but the second time i went and did it was in like a it was in a bar and it was like everybody's at the bar drinking and then somebody's getting like food and, and it's just sucked you know like yeah it's like no one's paying attention and then you're just like huh, hey like me up here me you know <laughs> and yeah that's horrible bar shows are pretty difficult <laughs> especially i mean i've competed literally i i did one show with uh uh it was on a, a night of the world series one year where we had uh we're, we were doing a, a comedy and music show and bill burr was supposed to go up and he went on like while the game was going on and you could tell he hadn't been in that bad of a situation in a while because <laughs> you know he's established now right. he's doing theaters and stuff like that and he just kind of like laughed he's like huh, how about we uh how about we sing our song now <laughs> like because <laughs> we're, 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 the the comics were doing a little bit of stand up and then going into their music like uh, oh, with yeah. this uh, show that we do called uh, the Goddamn Comedy Jam with Josh Adam Myers, oh, nice. uh, and so they do a stand up set followed by a song with a live band, and he's like you know he, he's like looking at this crowd like it. they're not ready like yeah. they, let's just play some music something that's loud and <laughs> that will kind of go over the the yeah. World Series game that's going on. Yeah, I mean that makes perfect sense, and and he's the type of dude that could just make that decision yeah you know, be like hey let's just play this like, yeah like if you're just starting you're like all right well i'll just fail miserably right now yeah, <laughs> yeah. i think that you uh, with anything whenever you're, you're not comfortable enough in your own skin you're not aware that you can take the reins and can take control of situations yeah. it happened i mean i've had so many shows like that or like bad auditions or th or things like where you know where I was starting out where I was like oh I didn't realize that I could have taken control of that moment oh, and really yeah. reshaped it yeah but yeah and I guess so you gain that from from going through those from yeah. failing yeah <laughs> then you're like oh okay well I've sucked so many times now that I don't have to do that again I can if I sense that I'm going down that path I'm like ah let's reset let's do this yeah now oh, man see that's I think that's that's awesome because I, I feel like that you know that just kind of gives so much insight to like um you know if you were going to go out and try it like I said that second one though I I left that and I said to my one buddy who um he, he's been doing it for a little while and he killed that night like in that situation mm -hmm. but mine like you know it was like a couple laughs and then it was weird but the story I chose a different story and then it was like you kind of needed everybody to pay attention to it for it to have that build up for and your then payoff that, yeah, and everything and then, yeah and so in those moments where I could feel that people weren't it starts rattling you a little bit. Oh, definitely. And then I was saying to him, I was like, dude, I bombed. And he's like, no, that wasn't a bomb. He's like, you got laughs and you did these things. Like you didn't do as well as you did before, but th that's not your bomb. So no, he's like, it gets me, worse. You'll bomb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll know <laughs> when you bomb. <laughs> I thought it was like, I, I thought yeah. it was, but he was like, no, nah, dude, you had more laughs than a lot of the other guys in this thing. And he's like, no, nah, that wasn't a bomb. I was like, oh, well it just didn't feel as good. And I was like, oh no, it's just like heroin. <laughs> 
was like, it's the best the first time. And then, oh, yeah. and then, and then you're just chasing that dragon every yeah, other time. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. So that was it. Went to and, and I haven't been up or do, done anything like that in a yeah, while. Yeah, so, so take that feeling that you had and amplify it times about 30. <laughs> That's what a true bomb is like. And you're just like, you just want to be done. You don't want to talk to like when i when i've bombed really bad i never have understood when uh i'll see like a comedian bomb and then they're hanging out chopping it up with people like the rest of the night i'm like dude you bombed why are you like sitting in your filth like yeah. leave yeah like you like, need to go take a rape dude shower. i go home i go home <laughs> yeah. and i'm just like i want people to like men in black forget the whole night happened yeah. and i just, just want to get crying out of in the bathtub yeah. like oh, i'm better than this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh man okay well uh maybe i won't try it because i don't want to feel that way oh no i don't want to <laughs> discourage you because here's the thing the feeling that you had it's you, you know and this is all it's all addictive like uh, like the drive to to go back to to do it the feeling that you had when when you did well what, like you haven't you know had a, a killer set right you amplify that times 30 the feeling yeah. that you get like you're like i'm invincible yeah you know? yeah, yeah, yeah when yeah. you're killing it's like nothing else whenever you're yeah. ma- getting like full room exactly. laughter and people all on the same wavelength it's i could imagine because that night felt good and then i could imagine it would be even like yeah the more, high just yeah. gets higher and higher yeah that makes total sense high high and very low see, lows i think for me personally because my wife asked She's like, are you going to do it again? Like after that one that was like, eh. I was like, I don't know. And I, I, I felt like this feeling of like, the trouble with me is like, if I'm not going to go a hundred percent at this thing and really love it and just focus my whole everything on this, then I sort of feel like, like a cheat, like, a, like a, I just, it doesn't feel right if I'm not going to make this my everything, Yeah, you know? And, uh, and for me, like, which I can respect that because there's a lot of people who, you know, or half in, half out kind of thing, or yeah, yeah, and and, and I feel like because for me, like personally, my goal is 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 to direct, to direct features, and I'm a camera guy now, and that's what I've been doing for years, and I'm working towards that, and just continuing in that path, and that's that's my goal. I'm I'm focused like on that, and so then it would be like shifting that gear, and I just feel like God, I, I mean. It, it was so much fun, but I, I would have to be like all in. Sure. Or, or I, would I mean, just that's, feel, that's you know, how I am. With yeah. Stuff. And you if are. I'm and that's the thing in, is yeah. like, that's your world. Like you're so committed. Everything you do is surrounded by that. And I feel like that's what it takes to be good at it. Yeah. Like, I mean, like for like for Kill Tony, uh, it's a show we do at the comedy store uh, every week for people who don't know. It's uh, comedians. Anybody who uh, can sign up out of the audience, doesn't matter what level of comedian you are, and you sign up to do 60 seconds in front of a panel, and uh, I explain it to people like uh, uh, The Tonight Show has uh, The Roots as their house band. Uh, We (laughs) are the house band, but we commit to different characters every week. So if The Roots were dressing up as different, you know, characters and committing to to that then that's what that would look like and uh it's just a panel uh like with tony hinchcliffe and red band and a couple guests of just chaos uh that's like riffing with the comics after they're set maybe getting to know them maybe roasting them if their set didn't go well so maybe roasting maybe them. <laughs> maybe perhaps yeah i was like that sounds like the most horrible environment i mean like if like for me like just thinking in terms of okay what i've already yeah. tried a little bit and i wouldn't call it stand-up i would just call it i went up there and told some stories but like if I were to try that in front of you guys, I, I would fail. I already know I would go in it. Yeah. I would be like, oh man, because you know, like here's all these professional comedians right there. They know how to do this. They already know the whole the whole game. And then and then you're just gonna put yourself out there. And then if you don't have like a tight like 60 seconds that's really good, chances are you're getting like. I mean, has there ever been a time that someone came up and just crushed so hard? They were like, that was great. That's yeah, it. That happens for sure. Wow. Where, where they'll just give like, you know, they'll, they'll be like, we don't have much to add. That was great. Like, and they'll find out about them. Like, Hey, what, what's your living situation? What's, you know, what kind of job? Like wh- how long you've been out here? They're, they're more interested. Like, where's this person going? Like, yeah. I don't need to help them currently with what their piece was that they just did. Like, we want to help them out in the future so or they might give them like if it was a really good set every once in a while 
somebody on the panel will have an idea for like a tag for one of their jokes like to tack on at the end of something but uh sometimes they're just like yeah that was great please keep coming back because like, yeah. we need you know you we you need all of that for right. the show you don't want we've done shows where we actually we did a show in new york a couple of years ago where every comic was solid and it didn't make for a very exciting show because there was no contrast yeah so Everybody was responding that they'd all been in New York grinding, doing mics for like between five and seven years. So they're all pretty solid. So we're just like, cool, keep it up. (laughs) You know, doing great. Yeah, you're doing, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But the the character element for us as the band is really fun. I do that with Joel Jimenez and uh, uh, Chris Dillon. And we we go all in. Uh, We were talking about commitment, like, that's yeah, all we yeah, do. We yeah, we yeah. dress head to toe and the characters that we're being that week and it's really fun to dive into different characters or impressions as we go. Like it's Oh, dude, it's amazing. I, I, I think I've been two or three times with Rick and, and each time it is something different and it's so fun. It like just cause you guys are so quick witted that like you'll take something that happened in the show and then throw it back in the mix of like whatever you're singing or whatever. And it's, it's just so fun to watch that whole thing kind of just, you know, be created right there. And that's what, that's really fun. Yeah. It's uh, I think it's definitely a crowd pleasing show. It's all about what's <laughs> happening in the moment. You yeah. Know? That's cool, and and you have you have your own podcast too. Um, yeah, Jeremiah Wonders. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah. what is that or like? So the theme of that show is uh, so I I do like some of my original characters on on that show and stuff like that, and I've got like some different segments, and uh, basically how that show works is the theme of the show is I've got a setup where. I've got some vocal effects processors, so there's a few mics, and the theme of the show is anybody can call in at any moment, but the people that are calling in would are actually you and I doing the characters that are calling in, so we're talking to ourselves, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a radio show that's <laughs> that's we are being the characters calling into the show. Oh, that's great. So we're setting each other up for different bits and Dude, I got to check that out. That's yeah, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. So wait, do you have a co-host or is it just I just I just do it with me and then uh, I just have a, a guest on because oh, cool. there's so many <laughs> fake characters that are calling in that there's it's just enough for me to <laughs> be able to <laughs> handle alone yeah. yeah nice so well i wanted to hear a little bit about kind of um your journey through comedy like what like what got you into it mm-hmm. then you know kind of the decision to are you originally from here or no i'm from kansas yeah so then you yeah. like the decision to come out and then just kind of how that goes because i uh not to interrupted but i saw you like on something i was watching inside jokes or something and it was this thing on amazon and they like picked a couple people to go oh to yeah the the just for laughs mm-hmm. and then i saw you like there but you weren't on the show but like i saw you in a thing yeah i, was I wasn't like, oh. like a uh i wasn't featured in part of the documentary of that show but you yeah. were there but so I, then I did I, new faces for just for laughs last year uh, in 2018 yeah. yeah hell yeah so i want to hear kind of get into that point how, like how did you get into comedy and then get because that's a big deal you know i feel like that's a big deal to get to yeah to that festival yeah it's yeah. uh it's it's uh just for laughs is considered probably the most prestigious comedy festival in the world yeah. you'll see it's weird the 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 amount of talent that you see all in one place in montreal at one time you'll see Chappelle walking the streets and at the after parties <laughs> yeah. and stuff while you know Jeff Ross and David Tell just got done doing their show and Russell Peters is coming from his sold out like like international show yeah. and Howie Mandel is now affiliated with like there's so much talent just like circling yeah. just going on it's almost overwhelming at times because you're like whoa this is this is everybody yeah like, they, they, <laughs> these are all the big this dogs is, yeah like, definitely the big league of uh, comedy and, yeah yeah Damn. Uh, for just for laughs, uh, specifically, and then I'll, I'll work backwards, kind of. That I had auditioned multiple years in a row. I think it was on my third or fourth. I think it was my fourth audition year that uh, that got me uh, out there. Um, the first one I did, uh, I had like a straight to callback thing. It went well, um, but then I didn't get it, and 
what's interesting about that festival specifically is you're seeing all your friends and people you know get it. There will be people every once in a while. You're like, "Who's this person? How they yeah, they get that?" Or nowhere, that, yeah. they came out of nowhere. Oh, I wasn't aware of them, or whatever. But it's this weird thing where you're always happy for the people who are getting it because they're your friends. But the comedian in you and the person who's <laughs> wanting to move forward is a little bummed because you're like, "What am I not doing right yeah. to get out there?" Yeah. So I did years of uh, auditions and callbacks until I literally the the one that I ended up getting, I was like, I was like, I don't even know if I can audition next year if I don't get it because the set that I did was, I felt so good about that. Yeah. I was like, if they don't pick me off of that, then like, that's what I do. Like right, th- that's that, me. That's me. <laughs> yeah. So, and luckily that was the year that it happened. So, oh, wow. uh, it was cool. So sometimes you get pushed to your breaking point. <laughs> right. I was going to say, there's like some level of like letting go yeah, and when and you I, let go, then for some reason it sort of takes the path it should. And by the time that I did it, it was kind of strange because uh, for me personally, um, I've always been, the way I've gotten things has been extremely unconventional. Uh, I'd already been to Montreal to do the festival, not New Faces, but I had already been there with Rose Battle and uh, the Comedy Jam and my, my personal show, Stand Up on the Spot, which is like an improvised stand-up show. Yeah. I'd already been there the last four years in a row which is very uncommon to go there with other shows before usually you do the new faces and then you come back to do other shows but i was doing these independent shows that i happen to be like an ensemble member of we did kill tony there the year before in montreal yeah and uh and it was just one of those things where it was like a weird situation that other shows were bringing me there but i kept just going back and doing the auditions and trying to get better every year with my stand-up until they're like all right, yeah, you got it this year. Yeah. So it's almost like relentless work. Yeah. Like because you get so many no's over and over. Dude, I think and I think that's just I don't know. I mean, not that, you know, people don't know it, but I feel like it's important to know like that it takes so much commitment in doing that. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of uh, you know, like you just don't like, just wander just, in and become like once in a while, once in a blue moon, maybe there's an Eddie Murphy, but even he right. still worked at it. Yeah. You know, and like, I mean, just like, you know, with you being a guy who does like camera work, it's like, you're not going to take amazing photos. I'll take that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You're not like hanging up like your, 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 your first year photos on the wall and being like, this is art right here. Like this yeah. is, or you're not filming Doesn't stuff. Doesn't get any better than this. Yeah. You're <laughs> yeah, not yeah. filming stuff that's like getting like awards at film festivals your first year in. Like that just doesn't right. happen. You, like you learn by exactly. failing over and over and then eventually it gets to a breaking point where it makes sense where it's like, oh, I'm ready now, even though for years I thought I was ready. I actually wasn't because right. every, everybody thinks they're ready. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, part of that is like you've got to sort of think crazy like that or you'll never get to that place. Yeah, of being yeah. Ready. otherwise nobody would move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to believe in yourself to a point. Otherwise yeah. nobody would even s- start pursuing it. Yeah. But yeah, I, so I uh, from Kansas and uh, I grew up... Um, just super into different sketch shows uh, like SNL and Mad TV later on in Living Color, stuff like that. Uh, I didn't actually see many stand-up specials growing up. Uh, the first stand-up specials that I grew up watching were actually like, uh, there were like a couple Christian stand-up comedians that my dad like got yeah. like VHS copies of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. that I was like, what? This? I was like, this is stand up. <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, I found out, I was like, yeah, it's a, it's a version of stand up. Yeah. It's not very common, but yeah, uh, that's funny. So yeah. did you grow up Christian or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I grew up like going to like a private school and, uh, grew up super religious and stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, we go to church every week and grew, went to a, uh, a private Christian school. So, uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've definitely, uh, now, you know, as I've gotten older, I've definitely lived a, a full life of seeing uh, a lot of different points of views. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Cause I feel like comedy would certainly expose you to that versus. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up yeah. like 
sheltered is a very good word yeah <laughs> all okay. growing up, you know what i mean yeah. and then like kind of like think a lot of things were pretty uh pretty eye-opening as as you move out to la and you meet a lot of different uh people and just learn about different walks of life that you were not introduced to at all being yeah a white kid from kansas you know? oh yeah <laughs> that's funny so so did you have like the support of like friends and and family stuff when you wanted to come start doing this like or was it kind of like comedy's the devil you know like you know <laughs> like, it, was, it wasn't quite like hey Jeremiah you're gonna burn in hell if you go for see your dream Jeremiah what are you doing it wasn't it, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. it wasn't quite that extreme yeah it was like you, you know stand up is the devil Jeremiah and you know <laughs> one way ticket to hell buddy yeah, yeah you better not be doing that <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't quite that extreme it was yeah. uh um I, my friends and everything, like by the time, and also I stopped going to uh, like a private Christian school. Uh, I went to public school from eighth grade on. And oh, those yeah. are really like, I feel like where you form a lot of your main yeah. friendships and stuff like that. Yeah. Or your high school years anyway. Yeah. So the, like all my friends there were super supportive. And then my family has been actually really supportive. They just don't like fully understand how everything works, you know, right, because right. I'm the only person in my family who pers has pursued anything in entertainment. Right. So they're just like more like, I think mainly my mom, you know, just being a mom, just more concerned, like, and scared, like, Am I going to be okay? Am I going to like get involved with the nice, wrong people? Uh, shepherd's pie. I can send you in the mail. Dude, my mom makes a <laughs> fire shepherd's pie. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, man. man. Dude, yeah. Because, I mean, I think, you know, every parent has that that concern, uh, especially, you know, like for me, I, I did the CKY stuff, then yeah. the Jackass show and the first movie and then the Viva La Bam and all this. And like that part of time things were going really well and sort of anything you're doing was taken off and working out. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you know, it was like, okay, well, what do you do now? You know? And, and for me, um, I just got heavy into drugs and alcohol and it worked as I know, but then I, uh, I got sober from it, but, um, some dark years there and then trying to figure out what do I do? And, and it made a lot of sense for be from being on set for a bunch of years that it, I would go into the camera side of things and do that. So it made sense. And that's the, the path that I took, but I would have like aunts and uncles that are like, Hey, you, your cousin wants to like go to film school. Can you talk him out of it? You know? And you're like, well, uh no talking about <laughs> yeah. it wow. but they would do that because they would be yeah. like uh, like because they saw what i went through you know like as so far they were as, afraid that they might follow a similar path if they go yeah. to film school that they might uh, yeah. end up doing drugs or something yeah it's but, like well just because he wants to study like you know like stanley kubrick doesn't mean that he wants to snort cocaine off of a hooker's asshole that, yeah, that was yeah. my choice yeah. like you know aunt so and so you know yeah, that was, was like, my film school yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so um yeah i i, I uh i I took a crazy ride but um but yeah everybody's journey is different and everything you know so i think they saw it more as like it's so unstable um and you know um, were they were, were they supportive though when things were like smooth and you're kind of going from job to job or or were they still like uh we don't like were, did they still like we don't understand this but we're supportive of what you're doing yeah well like my mom was supportive from the whole that's how my mom's always everything been. yeah yeah um but I think my dad didn't get it when I was younger because I was a little hellion and I was getting kicked out of schools and I was in a boarding school and whatever. And then, um, and then as it started to get successful, then he's like, oh, okay. You know, I mean, I grew up in outside of Philly in Westchester and, and you like the way I always said it is like, if you grew up there, like you either swung a hammer or you sold software, like, you know what I mean? Like there's like not many options for yeah. what to do. So then like being in the entertainment business is like what you know like why would you why would that ever work out you know so as it did then yeah of course he was like oh this is cool like and he's been supportive since then and even in the times where it's been like a challenge to figure out what's next or whatever he's been he's been like no dude you got to stick with this thing mm -hmm. this is your thing and so he's been good for that then but i think in the beginning totally didn't get it didn't agree with it didn't think it was smart because jackass hit in my uh, fall semester of my sophomore year in college 
and I was thinking, oh, I should drop out of college and do this. And he was kind of like, we don't, because none of us knew that it would take off. Sure. It was like, uh, maybe there's a pilot, maybe that'll be it, you know? And, and then, so it was cool to see yourself on TV for, for an episode. And then you're like, well, this, then they ordered more and then did that. But for me, I was able to film a couple bits, be at school and do that. Then when Viva La Bam came around, I had to take off from school because I was shooting so much. So it made sense. But I think in the beginning, it was very much like, dude this seems like maybe you should finish college yeah. you know and um and and rightfully so because i think as you know as a parent that's your concern for yeah. for your kids and and uh, uh i mean i i get it um however once i finished with evil Alabama and all those things and you know i was full-bledged alcohol <laughs> full-blown alcoholic addict uh, no that had nothing to do with it i just was that always but but at the end of that when when I uh, was trying to figure out what's next, I went back, I finished school, I had one semester left, so I finished school. Then I called up some friends and was like, hey, you know, like I finished, you know, I have my degree in television film, blah, blah, blah. I wanna get going in this side of the equation. And like, my friend was just like, oh, you graduated? Oh, cool, nobody gives a shit. So you should just start on this. You gotta work as this and like a, you know, production assistant or whatever you yeah, have to do Yeah, work your this. way up on set, yeah. And so then I was kind of like, well, fuck, why did I go back and pay all that money to finish school? You know, <laughs> like it was that feeling of like, oh, you know, obviously college is good for certain things. Like, you know, if you're going to become a doctor or if a lawyer or these, all these other things that specialty are specialty jobs. Yeah, kinda, yeah. Specific to that. Then you need to have that degree. But, you know, some of the best people that make films out there are have like high school graduate, yeah, maybe DIY, and sometimes, yeah. you know, dropouts or whatever. But, um, so then it was just like, I realized, okay, I'll start at the bottom and do this. And then as I did that, it, it was like, oh shit, I know a lot more than I think, you know, like then you, then I thought I knew like, or whatever, like I realized like, damn, over all those years of being around all this, I totally get this. I understand how this whole thing flows. And I decided I was really interested in camera because I want to go that way. Cause that'll help when you're good at shooting, you, you know, you're usually I feel like a better director um, to if you're able to shoot well and, and do that and understand exactly what you want and kind of envision everything through that. So that was that's my goal and that's my personal thought. But then there's other people, you know, go straight into directing and, and they're good at that and whatever. But but yeah, the support thing was was like, I think a little ta tapered from my dad first. My mom mm -hmm. always was like, you gotta be you, you gotta do what you do. But the aunts and uncles from the outside, you're like, this dude went broke, had to sell his house. He's all hopped up on cocaine. He's li he's like living on a bubble mattress in his mom's basement at almost 30 years old. And, and like it all fucking came crashing down. They're like, I don't want my kid doing yeah, that. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, but that's not what your kid's going to do. Right. And obviously I had these conversations with them and was like, look, I can't talk them out of anything. If they want to do this, they want to do this. And they're going to learn really quickly whether they want to do this or not. And like, cause it is a business that kicks you in the nuts immediately oh, yeah, it's... and, and, or vagina and, yeah. or both. And uh, so, but you know, it's like, like it's hard. So if you're not cut out for this, you're going to leave. You'll know pretty yeah. quickly. People yeah. move away all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a, a kind of a, a funny thing happen with my dad with, uh, we, it was kind of, it was a great full circle moment for me because, uh, we were doing kill Tony in Kansas where I'm from at the, a venue where I saw my first concert at. Hell yeah. And we're going back there to do this comedy show that we do. It is just like this cool moment where I was like, this is crazy Yeah, that I'm going to be on the same stage that I was when I was first a teenager, thing, yeah. you know, literally Dude, watching. That's so good. Yeah. You know, like, uh, and it was awesome. And, uh, I was excited for my family to come, but also you've seen kill Tony. I can sometimes <laughs> get maybe a Christian family might, yeah, uh, you know, sometimes it can get a little controversial, uh, a little edgy. Those are some good, yeah, yeah, those good, are good words, good Very buzzwords to describe it. Yeah. 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 Explicit at times. Yeah. 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 And, uh, they had basically, uh, they have the guy who's running tech, who is used to doing 
concerts. So he keeps using that light, you know, to shine on the crowd, like to do that thing where it sways. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, where it, like it shines light on the crowd to kind of get them excited anytime Tony goes, hey, how you guys doing tonight? Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. shine on the crowd. Or, <laughs> or anytime something happens in the show that gets like a moderate to big laugh, he keeps shining on the crowd to the point where I'm seeing this light go out on the audience a lot and unfortunately i saw where my dad was sitting every time the light went up <laughs> yeah, yeah and the entire show he had his arms crossed <laughs> and he was just like scowling at the stage just like not knowing like why he was there he was just like what show is this and that's kind of awesome <laughs> dude i like for 90 minutes to two hours i literally i'm on stage in full costume as doc brown from back to the future i'm dripping in sweat yes. seeing my dad not be into the show oh, at man. all and i'm like this is such a weird how <laughs> was that for you for in terms of like were you just able to stay present and be in the show and not let that get you uh i like that's like the ultimate heckler <laughs> you know, i know yeah. I know it really it was <laughs> because it's like just weaseling into your head I know, you know? like oh, I kept man. trying like it was, I think it de I think to a point it probably affected my performance a little bit I was still getting off like good jokes but it, it didn't help that the uh a lot of the people that went up were not great like interviews if they don't give us much to work with yeah if they're just like kind well, of boring you're playing it's, off of yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're trying to create energy and build momentum and yeah. if they're just very bland and, and they're not giving us like <laughs> details or being honest a lot of times if people are like honesty you know and comedy like that gives you momentum Absolutely. and something yeah. to work with because then all of a sudden it becomes relatable and people are like oh i can identify with that so yeah, it was just a weird situation where I, I saw my dad for like two hours not happy, like while I'm on stage oh, and trying to stay in the moment and yeah. trying to do a good show for everybody else is oh, there. Man. So did what happened after the fact that was he like I felt yeah. so bad. It was so we're only there for one night. Uh and my dad texted me afterwards. He's like, uh, I saw that you were busy with that line, so I left. And I didn't get to see my dad at all that trip back to Kansas. <laughs> oh, it was man. like, I'm going back to Kansas in a couple of weeks, like literally to cleanse my palate of that last trip. I'm like, I gotta go back for a weekend before Christmas. Like, that yeah. sucked. Oh, this was recent. This was like only a couple months ago. Oh, shit. It happened. Oh, and on the tour. Yeah, on, on that. Oh, okay. Like, we did like a summer tour. And, yeah. uh, it was funny. He, my dad, I, I don't think that my, my dad really is aware either. I, I don't think my parents are really aware of the uh, kind of the backing and the social media behind the Kill Tony show specifically is we have pretty avid listeners of that show. Yeah, yeah. And offhand, my dad somehow while he was in line for the show to get in somebody found out that he was my dad while they were in line. They're like, can I take a picture with you? You're Jeremiah's dad. Like, and he's like, yeah, it was really weird. Like somebody wanted a picture with me. And I'm like, yeah, that I, that's going to happen. Dad. I, I guess so. I guess that's a weird part of this new, new journey that we're on. So yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So, but the, you did talk to him after any. Yeah. Kinda... Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was nice. He was being nice, being like, I didn't want to bother you. And I just felt bad because I'm like, I'm not trying to big time my own dad. <laughs> yeah, out of I'm, the way, yeah, I, I got autographs. I got, a, I got a meet and greet to do. Don't worry about it. Like, I'm not, I wasn't trying to do that, but that's how it made me feel. I was like, right, oh right, man, right. it was like soul crushing. I'm like, no, I wanted ah, to see you. Yeah. I would have like ran out of the, you know, I yeah. like looked for, I was actively looking for him after the show. Like, Papa, are you, <laughs> are you here? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a hilarious yeah because i feel like that is kind of sort of that moment um that you get afraid of when success starts happening that like you start drifting and then all of a sudden you're like oh i'm not connected with the people that mean the most to me like not that that was happening but like it's this little fear in you a little bit you know like i think if you, i think it was like that movie Rockstar or something, the, uh, that, you know, remember that movie with, uh, Mark Wahlberg, it was like the worst movie, but it was, but it was like, he, this dude who's just this small time guy has like loves his girlfriend, all that shit. Then you just see them start drifting and you're like, fuck, that's what happens. Yeah. I think, you know? I think a big thing that happens from my ex experience with, because I've had a lot of friends, especially more recently in the last couple of years who 
you know, you start to see blow up around you because you, you do it long enough and you start to see the classes of comedians above you who, you know, you start seeing your friends on billboards. You start seeing them yeah. on like network TV, like as sitcom leads and they're in movies all of a sudden. And it's it's really weird because, you know, you start off doing open mics with them and stuff. But yeah. I think what happens is how people start drifting apart is the people who think that it's almost like they they're overthinking reaching out to them more than that person. Like the, those people still want to be reached out to, but they're like, I don't want to bug that person. They're like, no, like I, I still right. want to remain friends and everything, Yeah. but it's a two way street. You got to like yeah. hit, hit it back both ways. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, that's true even without like the notoriety stuff, like, because yeah. even just not, I'm like not the best at it. And then I'll remember, damn, I haven't reached out to that friend in a long time. Like, Two-way just, street, yeah, 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 for sure. That's crazy. So uh, what was I, I was going to, oh, oh, you mentioned a little bit about um, Roast Battle and, uh, you know, and Jeffrey Ross being up at Montreal, but but uh, I wanted to hear about Roast Battle because I got to see that too. And that, you know, and that's a totally different world, but was so fun to watch. Yeah like again fearlessness on on your part of just like being willing to like strip down and do whatever and be right up there it's so funny dude and, and uh rick brought me to that as well i i was um what what is the upstairs room the belly room the yeah. belly room in at the at the comedy store and and uh I, I was up there and got to see it when it was up there oh cool and that's uh yeah i'm glad that you're able to see shows in the main room and the belly room because the energy levels are so different. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You feel like the belly room is like you're a, a kid that's being naughty for watching something. Like you're <laughs> yeah, all up there. It's like a little tree house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can only fit like 80 people in there. So you're like, Oh, and then yeah. something like roast battle, you're literally laughing at the worst jokes you've ever heard in your life yeah. and yeah. you're just like is it okay for me to be enjoying this yeah, this, this much is really over the edge yeah but it's refreshing especially in a time like this it, yeah it's one of the last it truly is one of the last true like havens of free speech because everybody kind of agrees like hey like like when the battles are going on there's going to be some pretty gnarly stuff that's going to be yeah. said but everybody's in on it everybody's cool yeah. and it's there's no hate behind it it's for this weird game that's being yes. played which is roast battle yeah dude that's so fun to get to do that i think because like what what are some of your thoughts i i always i wonder this a lot cuz i have a couple of friends that are comedians and i just wonder like it's such a hard road to navigate with how PC it is. I, mm -hmm. I always laugh at the South Park, dude. Oh, genius. They just but, don't care. Yeah, it's great. And it's just like the PC babies, like, <laughs> and they're all crying. But like, it, 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 uh, how is that for you? I mean, you do edgy stuff. It's not, maybe, maybe it's not, ed, like maybe there's some people that are, that are walking that line worse, but. Yeah. But. Um, I think I do kind of edgy stuff in a kind of a different way in a fun um, lovable way that i think you like it's like you're not gonna be like i i would never take it like you've had hate behind any of it you yeah know? like, I, like yeah. I would never feel that way looking at what you do like yeah that's the, never the goal ever at least <laughs> yeah 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 but, but yeah. there are some people that it's like they're angry I, and trust me i love the fucking angry comedian because because <laughs> because deep down inside i'm pissed off yeah, yeah so 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 like so i love seeing that kind of stuff too um but but how like navigating it how is that like for you like uh well for me as a stand-up uh i i completely steer away from certain topics um okay with my stand-up but what's kind of fun about for me when I'm playing certain characters, I truly commit to what I think that character would actually say or what they would actually do. Yeah. So the stuff that I've said as characters, <laughs> I would never right, ever right, include right. in my stand up because right. I separate it so much. I'm like, ah, uh, like, you know, with the Kill Tony characters or different characters I played, the stuff I've I've even said like in the moment afterwards, like after the show, I'll like be watching. I'm like, I can't believe I said that. That was like pretty out there like that's <laughs> yeah. yeah that's that's uh but for roast battle i feel like uh you know we do the wave so we have a little bit 
easier job in the way that we're heightening the jokes that are being said. So we're almost a palate cleanser for the crazy jokes that are being said. Right. So if something gets said that's really brutal, we're a tension re- relief. Yeah. We go up there, Immediately, just like do something right physical, yep. do something silly, and we kind of like bring hopefully a little bit of more happiness in the room. But we've done some. We've done some bits that were considered like really like we did in New York. Uh, we did uh, after a joke hit, we acted like um, we had a, a fake airplane and uh, we acted oh. like the two towers going down. We did yeah. it in New York. And uh, at first we got huge boos from the crowd. Yeah. They're like, boo. But <laughs> I popped up. We popped up with American flags. Like we came back up. <laughs> like we're like, no, we we're back. Like we're back standing. And the audience is like, yeah. Like it, <laughs> it, it, it turned for these boos. Like these guys are dicks. To, they're patriotic. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> so we try to push yeah. the envelope with that like weird kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's fun to take them on that roller coaster yeah. ride of that. I'm like, no, boo this man. And then like, yeah. yeah. Dude, that, and I never thought of it how you how you said like cleansing the palate like because it does kind of get hairy in there sometimes like yeah there, there's times where it's like whoa that was like almost like a fence or something then you then you'll jump up and do something and then immediately as an audience member I'm like oh what's you doing and then I forgot about yeah, that other thing it's a reset button it's that's crazy I never even thought of it like yeah. that obviously you guys have that design that way and i you know and, and it's cool to hear the structure of the show and how you how you build it like that yeah because sometimes the jokes for me like that i i still have trouble kind of getting behind sometimes some people would joke about like dead family members or something that i'm like oh man like you yeah. couldn't think of it like something else to go after them for yeah. like I, I still like have trouble like ugh, like getting it like that's yeah. that's my personal uh button where i'm like uh i don't know i feel like you could have gone yeah. somewhere else with that kind uh, of stuff there, there was a comedian that did one about this guy and uh and it i didn't like it but um it was and like they always say that too soon thing but it kind of was and more so than it being too soon it just wasn't fun well that's the thing like if it's hilarious yeah, go for it like i had so we we had a a buddy in the uh the, the actual joke was yeah. about steve-o and not him but yeah it, i just felt because ryan is like although not same parents he is my brother so yeah. like I immediately was like, ugh. And then more so, I was like, it just wasn't even good. You know, like if it was good, then you just go, all right, I have to accept that was fucking funny. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. so the, the, that's the difference of like somebody doing it at like a low level compared to, so Ron White was in the original room the other night and uh, he goes, he, we like, cause this is true. We had a buddy who um, we unfortunately lost in the comedy scene who's like a big uh part of the community yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, um I know him. Yeah. yeah uh and ron white uh he starts his set and it's a hot room it's like 10 o'clock tuesday night which is like People one of yeah, like yeah, he, yeah, this is how like he starts irritable. his set like yeah. like this is in the original room it's downstairs the lineup is like him joe rogan joey diaz mark Marin, like all these heavy hitters yeah, back yeah, to back yeah. right and uh ron white starts his set after like I think Joey Diaz just killed or whatever and brought him up, and he starts to set by he's like emotional and he's like hey we uh, we lost somebody in the comedy community uh, recently and uh, I just want to let you guys know that it's never too late to reach out and ask that person for the ten dollars that they owe you. <laughs> <laughs> and dude, I like I died laughing because yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. he was emotional. He, like, he had brought it. He had tears like welling up in his eyes yeah, and yeah, it yeah. just crushed the room. Yeah. Like it was like that to me, like that's such a funny way of handling something that's a that's a tough topic, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's you know that's at the somebody who's at the top of their game like Ron White yeah. so that versus is, like an open so micer who might be doing roast battle who yeah. ha- is just trying to get any kind of Maybe shock value of you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and they're, but they're yeah they're I mean yeah he Ron White's incredible and obviously Brody Stevens is yeah. is uh, yeah. is awesome and oh yeah I want just just wanted to get into a little bit of, of Reagan and Watkins like I said that when Bobby Lee comes in and he's flipping out on that video and kicking the girl out for whatever like um 
what like what is the plan with that? You you ha- you gave me an album which I can't wait to, yeah. to listen to. Um, man, shit, I should reach it, and shit, throw it in front of the camera. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, look at that, that little, little shiny. Mm, like this or this? Oh yeah! Look at that, Reagan and Watkins. I got the I got the new album right here. Awesome, and it's beautiful. Uh, that that little nipple you got right there. Thank you so much. I've gotten lots of compliments on my nipple, so <laughs> hundreds of compliments. So thank you so much. <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> oh man. So um, so do you, are you? What's it, like? Do you guys tour and and? Yeah, we're trying to tour more often. Uh, we just did a run. Like uh, we were just out in New York for a little bit doing a festival, and then we did uh, Phoenix and San Diego, and we'll like be back in San Diego in a couple months, and we try to go up in LA as much as possible and yeah the goal is to hit the road a little bit more with it uh, since we just released uh, our debut album and we're already working on songs for the next album and just uh, bringing buddies who uh, like in uh, who are incorporated with either Kill Tony who that's how some people know us from so the Kill Tony band is comprised of Joel and Chris and myself so whenever we do full band stuff we bring those guys and make it a full show where the way we open the show is like with Joel Jimenez doing stand up and then Pat Reagan will do a solo performance then I'll do stand up and then I'll bring up Pat after that we'll do our duo and then we'll build it back up with adding layers of the band oh, yeah, so we'll oh, start yeah. acoustic and then we'll add drums and we'll add bass to it and then, then it becomes like this full rock concert hopefully at the end you know yeah dude that's yeah that's so rad so so you were a musician growing up too did you like i mean yeah did you, did you were you in bands and yeah <laughs> i was in uh not many like legit bands growing up I was, no like, no the, i, I want to hear about them i was in the, the the bands that i was in i was in uh, i was like in uh i was in like the church band which yeah. was like like you know a saxophone in a church band that's that's a little edgy right there that's, that's, too that's sexy. getting a little sexy <laughs> all right what are we doing here you know hold off a little bit <laughs> i love that <laughs> uh i remember yeah i do i remember being at a church camp you know the flaming lips like stole their instruments from a church and that's they really how they, like became a band or wow yeah. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so hey you never know you could be the flaming lips in about three years i remember somebody <laughs> this is like like how extreme like the church camps that I went to growing up uh, with there was somebody who was supposed to uh, play guitar in the um, in the church band and they were like some people were on the fence about letting a guitar in the band just because <laughs> once again rock and roll you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, dude, you know sexy. the devil sex drugs <laughs> rock and roll the whole thing and I remember I had a buddy who started playing the riff to Barracuda, Barracuda, the dun 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 you know, and it starts like kind of getting a little. Is that heart? Is that the band? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, right? And it got like where like people are kind of bobbing their heads to it, and literally somebody came by who was like, like one of the managers like, cut that off. We don't play rock and roll at this church camp. And we're like, what year is this? What are you? What are you talking about? Like they were worried that people were just gonna start just like unbuttoning pants and just like having sex, just like to Barracuda, and they were like, "What is happening?" Dude, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like they were walking by, and it's like it just started moving. Yeah, it's like, like, hey, cut that off! Yeah. Oh my god, that's Dude. ridiculous. Yeah, so I mean, I played sax and like literally the church band where I'm playing freaking, I'm playing hymnals like old hymnal music on sax so yeah. it was just very like you know like sexy sexy right <laughs> it's the uh, only way to put it is uh it got erotic as soon as i started playing sax in church <laughs> dude like because because i think that it, there's got to be i mean so you grew up in the church and you know this. yeah don't you feel like I, I guess my not not to ask you but my feeling was Dude, if you just like cut all of that off and you're just saying everything is wrong, all that does is make me want to go do it more. Well, that's the problem is, uh, it, you know, my brother and my sister kind of joke about it. But uh, if you look at where a decent amount of the group of kids that we went to school with, they kind of have some weathered past now. Right. Like, they, I think it was a little bit too heavy handed and... 
I know a lot of people who uh, went to my private Christian school that are straight up atheists now. They don't believe in God yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. Over it. Which it's probably from being being like you have to think this way. Yeah. It's just not you know that's just not how things should be like presented. Otherwise, yeah. you start resenting it, and then you're like, no, I'm gonna rebel. Like it's yeah. a natural human reaction if something is pushed upon you over and over to be like, what about this thing over here? Like why why do I have to listen yeah. to this? You know, like I mean, even just for me, I, I, like growing up, you always heard cocaine was so bad, and then I sniffed some so, some yeah. cocaine and was like. It's not that bad. What? What's anybody talking about? Yeah. Then I just started doing it and it was like, oh, I didn't know the part that it'll just sneak up on your ass and all of a sudden you're addicted yeah. to it. Yeah. I thought the first time I do it, it's going to be so awful. It was like, yeah. it was actually fun. And then it was like the, the horrible fucking part about it was that it snuck up on me and all of a sudden I'm a slave to it and it's this awful fucking thing mm -hmm. later, but not like when the first time you're like oh, I was so scared and then when you did it I was like oh well, that's not bad. so bad yeah like, what's everybody talking about yeah, yeah. yeah. so I, this I, whole I, bad stigma of cocaine yeah, and yeah. drugs that people give <laughs> heroin's pretty good actually this is, exactly yeah. and then you know you just get right into just yeah. shooting some some dope but uh but but yeah no I I always have felt like that and even in my my program stuff um there's a lot of people in there that are so like hell bent against the whole like God thing and this and this and that because because of growing up in an environment where it was just forced down your throat. And then you're like, dude, it's not that bad. Like, like you just ask a couple questions like, Hey, did you control when that happened? And they're like, no. And then you're like, did you control when that happened? Or do you have any say over that? And so maybe there's like a bigger thing at play here. Yeah. And then they're like, Oh yeah, I can get behind that. And you're like, yeah, it's not yeah. some bearded dude in the sky granting wishes or sending you to hell. Like yeah. that, that shit is, is crazy. And, and it sounds crazy, you know, I mean, hey, to anybody who believes it, go ahead and believe it. I don't mean to hate, but, but you know, whatever you need to do, life's hard. But, but at the same time, it feels like, whoa, it's a little heavy handed and it's hard to kind of navigate sure. that. And, uh, and, and, and don't get me wrong. It does work for, for a lot of people and it helps. But I think if, if you get so literal about it, it I always tell people like people who are on both sides of it, like some people can't comprehend religion on the on the way of like praying and stuff like that i'm like it's just another form of like meditation yeah exactly and and yeah. i'd say that to the same thing that people like you know meditation is just like prayer to people on the other side it's just like right, you know right, right. it's just you're on different now camps keys. but like <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> my kids <laughs> <laughs> we can all get together kids <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> the creepy no. waiter this is like i like you guys how about you kids <laughs> just, come on come on give me a kiss <laughs> don't make me big huh? yeah <laughs> pulls out his cell phone kids <laughs> <laughs> like where's this going yeah i don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah no it's good so so okay so very very sexy music in the church oh, band. Oh, so hot, dude. <laughs> so Robes, hot. the whole thing. <laughs> Satin. Well, but did you ever have, like, was was that ever part of your path, thinking, you know, you wanted to kind of make music your your priority, or or was it like you a hobby that you enjoyed and comedy was always the forefront, or, you know you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know what's funny? It's, it's, so, it's so funny and sometimes almost annoying how much moms have intuition about stuff you're like no mom like you, <laughs> you don't, don't get you it. don't know anything mom <laughs> it's it, like yeah. it's almost annoying sometimes how right they can be my uh my mom told me like when i first moved out to la i didn't even bring my sax i'm like ah i don't need it like yeah. I, I, you know what i mean like I, i'm moving out there to do comedy i don't yeah. need my sacks right now this yeah. is me at 20 years old and my mom's <laughs> like when i came home for christmas that break because i just moved out there like in july so i was just without my sacks for like four or five months and she goes i think you're gonna use this a lot i don't know I, she goes you're gonna use it in your comedy i'm like how i'm like how am i gonna i can't talk while i play you know what i mean yeah, yeah, like yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of it literally <laughs> yeah and i was like yeah okay mom i'll take my sax with me and dude me playing sax and having the it's ability to play jokes sax, out of yeah, the thing like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're just like <laughs> and then it's yeah, written there it's and written you read like it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like those old birthday, like like new those New Year's things yeah, that yeah, come yeah, out of the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she like she had that that intuition with uh, my sack. She's like, I think you're gonna use it in 
it, me having the ability to play saxophone has literally helped take me around the country. Uh, I, you know, yeah. I went to Europe for the first time earlier this year and that's all, you know, sax is part of this bigger thing. It's not the main thing, but like even with Reagan and Watkins, I play sax on the album yeah. and outside of singing and stuff with Kill Tony, I play sax on that uh, with the Comedy Jam, which we toured for yeah, for it's years. Yeah, part of who you are. Yeah. I played sax on that. I play like this roadie character and then anytime that there was a horn section or anything, I'd cover it with my saxophone and it's weird how much even people identify the saxophone with me now because I have used it so much yeah and my mom was just a hundred percent right and I just <laughs> you know have to own that like yeah. she's like nope you're right you dude you I, killed it on that one <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm thinking she's like Jeremiah like I know you think that the saxophone is sexy but it's actually just hilarious <laughs> and you're yeah, like, yeah. shit mom oh, <laughs> no it's sexy like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like trying to like no mom it's the hottest thing <laughs> these women have ever on. seen <laughs> this you tell me Are, this hey mom you sexy? feeling anything <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you feel now? Just revving your engine, mom? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. Oh, it's so good. But that that is that is so cool that that like that that your mom had that intuition and you know. just thinking of the, like a kid in the basement, just, yeah, like, yeah. practicing like an awkward teenager, yeah. and my mom's like laughing upstairs, like, "What are you laughing at? Yeah. It's yeah. getting steamy down here. Yeah, yeah. it's so hot. Yeah, are right, you gonna turn on? Better turn on the air conditioner." <laughs> Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. But uh, but man, so good and and cool that that you made saxophone a big part of. of Who would have thought that yeah. it'd be a, a fun instrument for comedy? Yeah, that's cool. So uh, Reagan and Watkins, do you have any shows coming up soon or? Uh, just right now we're, we got like a, a headlining date in San Diego, not to like December. Then we just got a lot of local shows coming up like around LA and stuff like that. that and I throw up on all my Instagram, social media and stuff nice, like that. Nice, dude. I want to come check, check one of those out. Yeah. Anytime. And, dude. uh, Kill Tony is every Monday. Every Monday at the comedy store. Yeah. Okay. And, and does that go up? That goes up live, right? Or, or yeah, we stream it live and then it's edited later, like, uh, for audio mastering. It, does it start at seven like or something or eight o'clock? Eight. Yeah, eight. Okay. Mondays, yeah. And uh, yeah, nice man. Well, thanks for coming on the Bathroom Break podcast. Dude, of course. Yeah, that's thanks for was, having me. Buddy. Yeah, it was a fun. I, I had a lot of laughs. And uh, mom, mom knew that it wasn't sexy. It was I know. It's just funny. <laughs> cool, man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, buddy. Oh yeah.